What is up guys, welcome back. And today we are returning to yet another one of Intel's Extreme Edition chips, the Core i7-4960X. It has been 20 months since LGA 2011 and the initial Sandy Bridge E processors were introduced and it was finally time for a much awaited refresh. Everyone, please welcome the Ivy Bridge E. The 4960X represented the flagship model and it was released in September 2013 for eye-watering 1000 USD. Manufacturing process was shrunk to 22 nanometers, and so was the TDP, down to 130 watts. There are still 6 hyper-threaded cores under the hood, but unlike its Sandy Bridge E predecessor, which was a 8-core part with 2 cores disabled, 4960X is a true 6-core processor and this helps to reduce the die size significantly. Those cores have a base clock of 3.6 GHz and out of the box they will turbo up to 4. 4960X supports up to 64 GB of DDR3 memory in quad-channel configuration and we also got the much-awaited PCIe Gen 3.0 with 40 available lanes. Oh yeah! For today's testing I will be using my trusty Rampage 4 Extreme 4 sticks of Corsair's Vengeance Pro memory, totaling 16GB and running at 2400MHz. The beast is cooled by H150i and powering it all is the ever trusty AX860i. If you are new to this channel, please note this ain't my first rodeo with Intel's HEDT and I aim to go for 5GHz where possible. And reading period correct reviews proved this being next to impossible. Not as if that was to stop me from trying it anyway. After I disabled all of the unnecessary features and dialed in some volts, 1.45 volts on the CPU core, the overclocking journey began. Some time later and after numerous BSODs and further trials and errors, I settled on 4.7 GHz at 1.38 volts. This overclock finally remained stable and it was high time to get on with the benchmarks. First of all, let's check how power hungry we are, measured as a total system draw at the wall. At stock, idle pulled just 115 watts, jumping to 143 at full CPU load. With the 4.7 GHz overclock applied, idle sits at 236 watts and full CPU load more than doubled to 314 watts. Looking at its predecessor, the 3970X, which to be fair, was running at 5 GHz, still tops this chart. Looks like the 22 nanometer process comes with decent power savings. Now, Cinebench R23, sorted by single thread score, puts the stock 4960X at 764 points. Overclock pushed this to 888, which was on par with Ryzen 3 1200 and around 3% slower than last gen's flagship, the 3970X. When sorted by multi-threaded score, stock 4960X managed nearly 5700 points. At 4.7GHz, ISO 6725 points, which is less than 1% slower than the 3970X. Considering we are pulling 35% less power, admittedly this is impressive, however, not actually faster, is it? Up next, Blender's car demo. At stock, this took 7 minutes and 40 seconds. Overclocking dropped over a minute, yet still no match for the 3970X, which was 10 seconds faster. Damn! 7Z benchmark results follow previous benchmarks and 4960X trails the 3970X by a small margin. Handbrake's fast 1080p30 preset applied to a 10GB 4K video file took 22 minutes and 5 seconds to complete at stock speed. Overclocking reduced this time by over 3 minutes, but still slower than its predecessor. And I think I can see a pattern forming. Surprising results really, I was not expecting to see the older Sandy Bridge E to maintain lead over the 4960X. And whilst we can't ignore the significant power savings, it leaves me somewhat disappointed. But let's look how it does in the game benchmarks. In F1 2018 and using ultra high preset, Stock 4960X pushed 154 FPS on average, which is matching Ryzen 7 1800X. From this perspective, we are doing well, right? Overclocking then pushed the average FPS to 172, 
which is equal to a overclocked 3770K, but still no match for the 3970X, which was faster by around 7%. Dirt Rally next, and here, stock 4960X squeezed 151 FPS on average, again on par with AMD's 1800X. Sadly, even at 4.7GHz, this CPU is no match to its predecessors, including the legendary 2700K. What on earth is going on in here? In Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Stock 4960X delivered 124 FPS on average, outperforming the 1800X by a good margin. Not much of a change to overclocked results, 4960X remained slower by 8% when compared to its older sibling. Forza Horizon 4 next. Using ultra quality preset, Stock 4960X pushed 124 FPS on average and allowed the 1800X to take the lead. Unfortunately, overclocked results are once again not enough to beat older and significantly cheaper quad cores, let alone the 3970X. Do I sound disappointed? I might be. Shadow of the Tomb Raider loves to put a good strain on a CPU. Come on 4960X. At stock speed, I saw 122 FPS on average. Overclocking then pushed the averages to 140 FPS. It's quite clear, today's testing consistently follows a trend. Rainbow Six Siege next. No surprises to report and results are in line with all of the previous graphs and leaving the 4960X about 7% slower. We are nearly there with game testing and Far Cry 6 with Ultra settings comes next. Stock 4960X pushed 67 FPS on average. When overclocked, average jumped by 10 FPS to 77, which matches the performance of the 1800X. 3970X happily kept its distance and about 7% faster. Finally, the last game tested was Cyberpunk 2077 using high preset and no upscaling. Here, the stock 4960X delivered 93 FPS on average with 1% lows at 60. Overclocking provided a solid boost and with 108 FPS on average, we gained lead over the 1800X and older quad cores and what is the closest we got to the 3970X in today's game testing? Just 3% slower. So, where do we even start? Not gonna lie when I say, I expected more? There are of course positives. Let's not ignore the much improved power efficiency, the support for PCIe 3.0 and all of the HEDT perks that come along. On the other hand, we are stuck with the aging X79 platform, so for existing 3970X users, this upgrade really did not make much sense. And to make matters worse, the Z87 chipset was available for mainstream Haswell processors before Ivy Bridge E even came out. So yeah. Results of today's testing somehow highlighted what happens when Intel has no competition. I'm fully aware that outside of professional use, the enthusiast lineup wasn't really suited for gamers, but it is almost sad to see a heavily overclocked second gen quad core beating the 4960X in few of the games. But that's all for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.